What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the WordFence security plugin to protect your WordPress website. WordFence is one of the best security plugins you could use. It's extremely popular, well maintained, and one of the most respected names within the WordPress security space. Alright, so once I'm done with the video, I'll also create a blog post that I'll post on Pixelmerb.com so you can check it out there. What I typically do is I create the video and then I create a corresponding blog post to go along with it. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscription icon and also hit the notification button down below so that way whenever I create a new video, you'll be notified. Alright, so to get started, what I'll do is I'll use my demonstration website over here. You might recognize this website since I used it to create the video on how to make a WordPress website. I'm using my custom theme called Evo Pro. I'll leave a link in the description section and a video card in the upper right hand corner so you can check it out. Alright, so what I'll do here is I want to first show you the file manager. Because I'm going to show you what files and folders WordFence creates on your WordPress installation. So this is the root directory. We're going to see what changes it makes over here. We'll take a look at what changes it makes within the HC access file. And we'll see what changes it makes within the WP-Content folder. And then on our database, we'll see what changes it makes to our database tables. We currently have 26 tables. WordFence will add some more tables to this. All right, so I'm going to go here to the dashboard. We'll go to the plugin section, add new. Just type out WordFence. It's the first option. It's very popular. Active on over 1 million plus installations. That's install, then activate it. Once you activate it, you're going to get this pop up over here where you can put in your email address and you can start a tour. We're going to close this out for now. You also get this section over here. And what this does, it helps you configure your web application firewall. So click here to configure. This gives you some information about live traffic. We'll end the tour there. It scans your configuration for your server and gives you the best recommendation. Now to move forward, you have to download your HC access file. Once that's done, you can continue to the next step. From here, it'll give you some information about the fact that it's currently in learning mode. And then it'll switch to enabled on the date it gives you in this section. For brute force protection, what I recommend here is that you keep it set to force admins and publishers to use strong passwords. Now for lockout after how many login failures, I normally leave this to a very low number because I use a password manager, I use two-factor authentication, and you could also whitelist your IP address. Now if you don't use a password manager and if you don't whitelist your IP address, you want to be careful with this because if you enter the wrong password too many times, you will get locked out. So let's just say five for now, but make sure you use the right number for you. And then for how long to count the failures over, I say one day and the amount of time to lock them out, 60 days. I immediately lock out invalid usernames and then I save the options there. Now for rate limiting, what I do here is I immediately block fake Google crawlers. I leave this set to the default for the real Google crawlers. And then if anybody exceeds a certain amount of page visits, I throttle them. The reason for this is because it can drain your server resources. So I normally leave this to about 30 per minute. And then I block it for one month. Save the options. All right, so now what we could do is go to the options section. Scroll down here. I recommend unchecking this for anybody using a shared hosting account because this does use a significant amount of server resources. So uncheck that. I check this off over here to update WordFence automatically. And then over here, you put in your email address to where you want to receive notifications, make any changes, save your options. And now for here, if you want to get emailed whenever WordFence is uh, updated, you can check off there. And these are for the alerts. Now play around with these settings because they can bombard you with a lot of emails if your site is under attack in some way, shape or form. I like to get the emails because I want to be notified and investigate what's taking place. So I recommend definitely leaving these checked off. If you're getting bombarded, then you may want to reconfigure this. Maybe you want to set it up to go to a different email address just dedicated to receiving these emails. So that way your primary email box won't get flooded. So you could just check these off if you want. Or scroll down. What I typically like to do also is to scan the themes and the plugins against the original versions in the WordPress repository. So check those off. Now if you want to scan files outside of your in WordPress installation, you can check that off there. If you want to scan images, binary and other files as if they were executable, check that off. 
high sensitivity mode. Now just a forewarning, when you enable high sensitivity scanning, you're going to get a lot of false positives. So you're going to want to investigate the issue, find out what it is, reach out to the original developers, or use a diff checker to see what's changed. Now you can reduce your server load by checking this option over here. We already covered this before. We already covered this as well in the first part. Now if you want to whitelist your IP address, you could place it here. That's good so that way you won't get locked out from your website if you input the password wrong over a certain amount of times. But be careful with that. Obviously don't do this from a public location. Don't do this from somebody else's computer or anybody else's network that you do not trust. Only do this from an IP address that you do trust. And even then you may not want to do it. The best thing to do is to use a password manager, two-factor authentication, and keep that password extremely strong. We'll scroll down further. You can hide your WordPress version, and then I typically leave everything else checked off the way it is. Now if you're going to deactivate WordFence, and you wanted to delete the tables that it creates, check this off here. And if you want to disable WordFence cookies, you can check that off there. Now another cool thing about WordFence is you can export your WordFence settings. So if you manage a couple of websites, or if you own a couple of websites, you can easily just import your WordFence settings, make it a lot faster to set up. You make any changes, save them here. Right, let's look at the tools real quick. The password audit is for premium members only. The who is lookup. You can look up based by IP address or domain name. Cell phone signings for premium members only. Diagnostics. This gives you a diagnostic of your server configuration and lets you know if everything's okay. Now for live traffic, we're not using this because I don't recommend it for the average person. It can cause performance issues. Now when you're blocking people, this is where you'll have the IP addresses for that. The country blocking as well. And advanced blocking. For your firewall, this is the web application firewall. Brute force protection, we already went over that. And the rate limiting. If you want to scan your installation, you would go over here and you would scan your WordPress installation. Any issues that pop up will be over here. And scheduling your scan is for premium members. And these are the options as well. These are shortcuts that you could take. And then your dashboard for WordFence. This tells you what you already have configured. And then it tells you what IP addresses have been blocked, the successful or failed login attempts, things of that nature. All right, so that's the back end of WordFence. Now let's see what it did to our file manager. Let's reload this section here. Now in our wp-content folder, it created a new folder over here for the WordFence logs. And then obviously we have our WordFence plugin right there as well. In terms of our root folder, it created the wordfence-waf.php file and the user.ini file. And in our htaccess file, scroll to the bottom, we have our htaccess rule over here as well. So those are the changes it makes on your WordPress installation. So if you're ever going to delete WordFence, you're going to want to delete those folders as well. And also the files. Now for the database, remember we have 26 tables here. If we refresh this, we now see that we have 50 tables. So we just jumped up by 24 tables. So these are the tables that it adds to your WordPress database. And that's it. Now WordFence is very popular. It's very powerful. It's one of the best solutions you could use. I definitely recommend it for everybody to use on their sites. Because as we know, cyber attacks are taking place on a daily basis. So anything you can do to improve the security of your website, I definitely recommend it. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. This was a demonstration of how to set up WordFence and an overview of what it does to your database and to your file manager on your WordPress installation. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon down below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.